Everybody loves the Hispanics more. Who do you like more, the country or the Hispanics? He says, the country? I don't know. I, I, I may have to go for the Hispanics, to be honest with you. We got a lot of Hispanics. Hispanics seem to be gradually shifting towards the Republican Party. This is a trend we observed in many places in 2020, and it seems to be continuing. On Tuesday night, Republican candidate Myra Flores, who, by the way, I have met, I told you around this time last year to keep an eye on South Texas and this race, well, she ended up winning her special election in a Biden plus four district that is 84% Hispanic. So I'm kind of vindicated on that one, huh? These trends seem to be the strongest in South Texas and obviously South Florida, but they are not exclusive to them. Across America, we see some degree of a Hispanic shift towards the GOP going on, and that includes even places like Los Angeles. So what does it mean? In this video, we are going to acknowledge that it is a good thing that this is happening, but it is not an excuse to become liberal on immigration or frankly liberal on anything else. You know, there seems to be this consensus thinking that the GOP can win minority votes by pandering. Oh, if you just give the Hispanics amnesty, they'll vote for you. People like Lindsey Graham and Maria Salazar. And by the way, the late Ronald Reagan subscribed strongly to this thinking. And this is despite the fact that the current Hispanic realignment is taking place in the shadow of Donald Trump, who was the most anti-immigration Republican president since Calvin Coolidge. Like I said, in today's video, we will talk about this. So first, it's important to acknowledge the Hispanic shift in the context of America's demographic situation. As I'm sure you know, America is a rapidly demographically changing country. White people are on pace to become a minority in this country over the next few decades, whereas Hispanics are rapidly growing and will probably end up being the largest racial group in the country when that happens. Now, I understand a lot of conservatives don't want to have this conversation because it's uncomfortable, but it doesn't make it any less true. As of right now, white people are the electoral backbone of the Republican Party and of the conservative movement. Of course, there are minorities that support these things, myself included, but at their current rates, demographic trends would suggest that the Republican Party will become politically irrelevant on the national stage when white people become a minority in this country. Those numbers just add up. And of course, there are many more cultural and social ramifications of demographic change on top of that, which we won't get into. But what I will say is that it is objectively very optimistic to see a Hispanic shift towards the GOP. And I'm not minimizing the effects of demographic change, but you'd hope that this is a sign that our ideas are at least somewhat transmissible, that perhaps demographic change will not spell the total political erasure of everything we believe in overnight. You'd hope that this moment in history maybe is something of a long-term realignment, similar to the South becoming Republican, or white Catholics in the North becoming Republican, or the Midwest becoming Republican today, right? And demographically speaking, if the Republican Party wants to survive in the future, it needs this realignment. It needs Midwestern white Americans to continue their trends towards the GOP, and it needs Hispanics to start coming to our side. I think we understand this. I think we understand that this is kind of necessary for the future. So with that said, let us discuss what actually brings Hispanic Americans into the tent. The first thing I will say is that the answer is not to become liberal on the issues. Myra Flores was a massive social conservative. Let us not forget this about her campaign. She focused her campaign primarily on being pro-God, pro-life, and fixing the border. Those were her big issues. And comparatively speaking, actually, to most Republicans, she was less liberal even on the issue of legal immigration than probably the majority of the GOP. Again, that one in an 84% Hispanic district in South Texas. And South South Texas as a whole started to come over to our side during the presidency of Donald Trump, who was the one who cut legal immigration in half and was famously hawkish on the issue of illegal immigration. So again, it's very clear that the answer is not amnesty. The answer is actually social conservatism, immigration restrictionism, and economic nationalism. 
this is the agenda that seems to be popular. But with that said, I really do think it runs deeper than that. And it has to do with identity. You see, people will often say something like, I never understood why Hispanics vote Democrat when they're actually natural conservatives, especially on a lot of social issues. Aren't Hispanics kind of inherently conservative people? And the problem with that is you pretending politics is actually about that. So let me put it as simply as I can. On average, people who have been in a country for several generations will lean more conservative than an immigrant who just got here. And it's logical why this would be. Right? People who have been in a country for several generations are more likely to have a stake in the traditional order than people who haven't. Hence why they tend to be more conservative. Yes, there are exceptions to that, but we are talking about the norm. Because elections are not dictated by the exceptions or the anomalies or your anecdote of why actually that's not true. No, elections are dictated by majorities, by the majority rule, and this is the majority rule. This is how it will always be. Even if there can be exceptions, you have to think about what groups as a whole are more likely to find what types of ideas appealing, right? And so yes, immigrants and kids of immigrants can vote Republican, but understand that any naturally conservative coalition will primarily be made up of the people who have been in this country for several generations. It will always be like this because that's kind of inherent to, you could say, conservatism, right? Now, conservatives have a choice to make. We can either pretend like this is not true because it sounds mean, and in doing so, we can continue to enable the mass immigration that the left is literally using to destroy us and to destroy our country, or we can accept that this is the reality of the world and craft logical immigration policy that will ensure our country has a future, right? So I'm going to choose the latter and hence make the argument that what we need now is an immigration moratorium. That is a pause on most to all immigration. Why? Because we need room to breathe. We need to allow the post-1965 wave of immigration to assimilate and Americanize as much as possible. We need Hispanics especially to develop something of an American identity, which I'd argue most probably don't have right now. You know, I grew up in Los Angeles. I'm sure many of you guys are Hispanic or grew up uh, in areas with lots of Hispanics, and we can all attest to the fact that let's just face it dual loyalty runs rampant in hispanic culture many hispanics would rather identify more with their race or their home country than america and you will see this when you drive through ethnic neighborhoods and all you see are Mexican flags and Salvadorian flags, but not a lot of American flags. You see this when people choose to continue speaking Spanish and not bother to learn English, even though they're now in America and English is the American language. This to me encapsulates the reason why most Hispanics vote Democrat. You know, it doesn't matter whether or not they agree more with Republicans on certain social issues. It doesn't matter if they are natural conservatives, quote unquote, if they are natural conservatives for their home country. Because fundamentally, Republicans are the party of American identity. We are the more patriotic, more pro-America, traditional America party. And politics is driven by identity more than anything else. That's the truth. So hence, it doesn't matter if they are Catholic or pro-life. If Hispanics lack an American identity, they will naturally flock over to the party of anti-Americanism. And that is the Democratic Party. The Democrats are the party of anti-American foreign identity. This is true. And so I would say that one of the strongest cases for an immigration moratorium is the argument that American society needs time to Americanize and assimilate the millions of immigrants we've led in since 1965. And that cannot happen if you keep overwhelming the system with more immigrants. You know, Pat Buchanan argued over the years that a pause on immigration 
One of the things it would do would free up the labor market, which would allow a lot of Hispanics to have time and money and resources to move up to the middle class, maybe start owning some single family homes and begin to buy in a little more to American society and American culture and American identity. And even more so, I'd argue that just with time and with generations, you will just start to see more people align more with America and Americanism over time. By the way, we currently see this now, right? Because I should point out that most of the Hispanic drive to the right is being driven by Hispanics who have been here longer than the Hispanics who haven't. For instance, the strong push in South Texas is primarily being led by the Tejanos, who have been in this country since the 1800s and identify far more as Texan and as American than Mexican. Even across the country, you're seeing most of the Hispanic realignment come from second or third generation Hispanics or Hispanics who came here in the 80s, etc. The point being that, again, it is the people who have been here longer that en masse tend to be more conservative. Once we understand that politics works this way, we can start to win. Yet when you assess our current immigration system and the current situation, it is always a losing battle because it always goes this way. People are here for decades and we start to make gains with them, but that doesn't matter because our enemies are bringing in millions of new people every year to cancel out any gains we made with the previous batch. And it will always be a losing battle because assimilation is a process that takes decades, whereas you can bring over a new immigrant in like two seconds. You see the deal here? So the conservative case for an immigration moratorium is very strong and very obvious for us in my opinion. And you don't need to feel guilt or shame because, oh, I'm an immigrant or my family are immigrants. It's like, okay, well, are you American? Because if you truly believe you belong to this society and not a foreign society, then it's your duty to do what is best for this society. And that's clearly an immigration moratorium. You know, I really don't understand this whole logic of, oh, well, aren't your family also immigrants? It's like, okay. And part of the point is that we need time to assimilate and to Americanize them too. We need a break. We need a pause. We need to buy time. And if you're such a patriot, because my American dream, my immigrant story, that's why I love America so much, then maybe you shouldn't be guilt tripped into watching what is supposedly your country too go down the toilet because some libtard convinced you that it would be dishonorable to your immigrant parents who, you know, by the way, probably secretly agree with you and are probably super pissed at the current system. Okay, let me just say that many such cases, but it's just so true. We got to stop the guilt tripping. We got to stop letting the left kind of shame us and bully us into supporting the destruction of our own country because Statue of Liberty and my immigrant grandparents or something. It's just ridiculous. Now, I do suppose that a concern might be that today's American culture is left wing and degenerate. This is true. So wouldn't Americanizing people just mean converting Hispanics to that? Well, firstly, I would argue that it's still easier to reach people that at least accept that they are American rather than not. Okay, that's number one. But secondly, I think this is where their realignment towards the Republican Party really changes the game. Because as we so often discuss on this channel, politics impacts culture right? Politics impacts culture. So I would say that assuming we are able to maintain Hispanics in the Republican Party and we continue to shift our Republican Party towards a vision of Christian nationalism, I would argue that the Hispanic affiliation with conservative politics will start to breed a conservative culture over time. See how that works? So don't be surprised if the people currently walking away from the Democratic Party because of the border or inflation or whatever do start to become culturally conservative and kind of culturally Republican, right, over time. This is not a process that happens overnight, but again, politics and culture are intertwined. And so if it's strong enough and sustained enough, the current political realignment can eventually produce a cultural realignment too. Political realignments often do produce cultural realignments, but in order for this to happen, again, we need that immigration moratorium. If we are soft on immigration, if we allow amnesty and mass immigration to continue, all you will get is simply electoral suicide for the GOP. What we need is to buy that time for ourselves. And we need to be a party of strong cultural conservatism 
if we are going to be able to use politics to impact that culture. In case you haven't detected what I'm really getting at here, what I am saying is that the only way to not just win the Hispanic vote, but to salvage America's greater demographic problem as a whole is to become the party of Trumpian populism, America first conservatism, and Christian nationalism. This is the only way to do it. We have to be more conservative than we currently are, not less conservative, and I doubt the RNC or Ronna McDaniel or Kevin McCarthy or Lindsey Graham or any of them will listen to us, but it's the truth. Okay, so share it with your friends, tell your friends, tell the GOP, mail this video to the GOP right now, do it. No, but seriously. Okay, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more. Alpha moves only. God bless. Viva. Viva los. No, okay. And peace. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo as long as...